I'm Dominic Cruz, UFC bantamweight contender, and you're listening to the Action Sports Show. You're on, guys. I'm one of your hosts, Jim Holtz's Dan McGranahan, and Cameron Steele. Brad, in the house tonight. Man, so good to see you. I like yeah. that part where Amanda says, "You're on, guys. You're on, guys." Just no remind, one knows that's her. It reminds me of Amanda. You yeah. Know. So shout out to you, Amanda. And shout out to, to Chris, our, 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 our crazy board operator back there, uh, pushing all the buttons, twisting all the knobs, making it all happen over there. Not just the local drunk guy behind the bar. Like you know, People walk in. And I want to know how you worked that out because he hated you back in the old days in your right? old show. And every time I'd come in there, he would tell me, this guy is a clown. <laughs> big, and Big dollars it took to And, and so here. then I walk in here, and right. here's Chris back again. He Last quit his guy. other job to come with you. I've Last guy you expected Jim. to see here. <laughs> oh, sorry. I, I transpose that. I hated Jim. There you go. So, and I'm he sorry. was and is one of the biggest – Pistol Pete lovers on the planet. <laughs> yeah. All the power to you. He will not hold that against you. I've been friends with Pistol Pete for a decade. Man. Did I, any one of you ever shave your hair from all these crazy bets where the threats loser shaves their head? It never happened. No. And you probably still owe him a hundred bucks if you ask him. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> Duh. Well, hey, let's bring our first uh, great guest on the show. She's uh, uh, sitting right here, UFC contender, uh, and our first female MMA athlete here on the show. Super stoked to have her. Jessica Penny, welcome to the Action Sports Show. Thanks for having me. It is our pleasure. And uh, so you, you, uh, you're you training right down here in San Diego at, at Alliance with our buddies Dominic Cruz, Jeremy Stevens. Yes, I am. I, I recently made Alliance my home um, before I was training up in Orange County at Rain Training Center, among other gyms. And um, unfortunately, Rain Training Center closed down and I was, you know, looking for gyms and I've you know, been to some amazing spots. I've had the opportunity to train with great people um, all around California and, you know, first day at Alliance meeting coach Eric and, you know, some of the other people. I just knew that's where I had to be. So I'm, I'm very happy to be there. We've had several of of the the folks from uh uh dominic uh jeremy fury jury all in the house michael chandler just a great bunch of people and it looks like it's just that way all the way around so it probably feels like a great fit there's there's absolutely amazing people in that gym and it just makes you push that much harder uh just being around that that caliber or that caliber of athlete um just makes you strive to be even better so talking about the gym, we were talking about earlier going to the gym. We, you, you weren't involved with the conversation. <laughs> My name is spelled G-Y-M, by the way. Okay, it is not. But <laughs> I, I, I went to the gym today. My legs are smoked, okay? So I'm lucky if I get there two or three days a week, usually it's zero times a week. Just, I mean, your life is about training. And it so, is. I mean, is it two days or two times a day in the gym? or what? I mean, how does it ramp up? I mean, obviously, you probably take rest time, and then when you get closer to fights, you start to ramp it up. But I think that's one of the things that, you know, when, when you look at the fighters in the UFC or any, any kind of fighting and how, how toned everybody is, it must be so tough to figure out how to get yourself, and I'm sure there's a science to it, to get to that pinnacle right at that moment where you're going to step in to the octagon. I mean, so you want to be at your prime. One thing that – one question I had is, is it easy for you to burn yourself out too early before you get there? Because that's what you—that's what you hear about people peaking before it's time to peak. Absolutely, and I used to have a huge problem with that. I mean, you know, two weeks out from a fight, and I can't even, you know, walk. <laughs> 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 you tell me to kick, and I throw my right punch. You're like, it's just like you get just so focused, and you know, it's um, there's so many aspects to the sport of mixed martial arts, and you just. Um, me personally, and I know a lot of other athletes, we always feel like we're not doing enough and we need to do more. And then we end up burning ourselves out and we put ourselves in a really bad situation. And you may be in great shape, but you're so overtrained that you feel like you have no cardio. You feel completely, you know, discombobulated. So it's, um, it's something that I've had to really work on about, uh, peaking. And I do that a lot with like periodization and, you know, monitoring my, my heart rate and this, that, and the other, but, um, it's, it's something that really happens and it can make, you know, the most well-trained athlete completely crumble in competition because they've already been in, you know, 10, 20 fights during the training camp. So it's something that you really have to watch out for. And it's something that um, I've definitely learned the hard way. There's definitely something to be said about rest and, you know, making sure your body is 
complete because what you're doing basically is you're building muscle or technique or repetition and there's a point where you can maybe do too much and your head can't suck it all in but also your body needs to oxygenate and just kind of like absolutely it's i mean rest and recovery is just as important as as training it's um it's something that you have to do i mean i i do take you know at least one rest day but i mean not all of my training sessions are high intensity and that's what i used to do everything was you know kill yourself crush yourself if you're not you know like dead at the end of training, you're not training hard enough. And and now, you know, I've been in the sport for 10 years and getting a little up there in age. <laughs> I, 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 think, I think that's exactly what it is right there. You go through that youth and enthusiasm sort of version of yourself as a athlete. And then you go through the, the wisdom and experience version of yourself as an athlete. And they part of a key part of that transition is you learn to how to do things smarter. You learned the, in certain areas where you weren't maximizing and it typically comes in things like nutrition and rest mm-hmm. and preparation and, you know, things that you kind of. I mean, when I was younger, I didn't need to rest or eat right or, you know, anything like that. And now I have to get at least, you know, eight to 10 hours of sleep. Otherwise I'm a wreck. Sure. <laughs> and, and curious about the same topic, kind of a little different though. When you're younger, you're kind of like full of just vinegar, you know, ready to go, whatever you're doing, you're racing dirt bikes, cars, fighting. But do you find yourself now being able to be more uh, a student of the game too? You're able to learn your opponents more, take the time uh, to use your head as much as your body as you get more experience. I mean, I've always I've always been an extremely composed fighter, and I, I've prided myself on being able to you know analyze film and stuff like that. I feel like in this sport, because there's so many aspects to it, you have to be like pretty intelligent and um, mindful about you know how you're training and, you know, training for your opponent, that kind of thing. But, um, definitely it, it does come with age because, and I think it's more of like a male thing too, that, you know, you just want to go in there and like kill everything, crush everything. And, you know, um, I, I think females are a little bit more, um, it's a little more strategic, a little yeah, more methodical. Yeah. <laughs> well, you talk about intelligence too. Now, uh, if I'm not mistaken, you're a Cal State Fullerton grad, right? Yes, I am. Yeah. Okay. So my wife's alumnus there as well too. Awesome. So, Maybe some of the, I mean, you, you look at it and you, when you, you classify a dirt biker, car racer, fighter, whatever, maybe you don't think school is a big part of it, but you know, maybe the thinking game is also something that you learned by making your way all the way through college and doing all that as well. I don't know. I mean, I'm just, I was looking at your bio and I picked that up because like I said, my wife goes there, but, or went there. So I don't know if that plays a part of it too. I mean, I think it does. I mean, I, I think, you know, educating yourself like in school and with whatever you're doing is important. And once you stop learning, you stop progressing. And I think that's, you know, the most dangerous thing for, for any athlete or any person. Well, that- it's like, I, I'm amazed when I listen to Dominic commentate on TV, how cerebral and, and, and thought provoked he is about the, the game and the, the analysis. Absolutely. Uh, crazy you know but i mean he was kind of forced into it being injured for so long and then that's his job so uh, and not ev- not every fighter is like that i mean right luckily you know most fighters have coaches that'll you know break down film and you know all that kind of stuff for them but uh, dominic really does have a great technical eye and, and, and i think that being his job you know commentating on tv has even you know made that grow absolutely tenfold, and it's you know? and it's a great skill to to have and not everybody has that now are you a fan of the sport he 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 has to watch it all for for the tv do you watch all the events do you attend them all when when you're not at them or in them are you just a fan of the sport i'm a huge fan of the sport yeah because you said that you watch just this weekend the um yeah the, i the watch fight. all of them i mean you know my my teammate phil davis was on that card so i i definitely paid attention to it but i i love combat sports i love Muay Thai and boxing. So Phil's out of alliance as well. Yes, he is. We want to get him on, and I'll tell you what, King Mo is lucky that he didn't get to face him in the final because Phil won a tournament. I was, I was really excited to see that fight. That would have been a really good fight. Totally. Two really skilled guys, and um, you know, you look at the brackets and you knew that they were going to make it to the final. So it's really unfortunate that uh, King Mo wasn't, you know, medically cleared. But I mean, it's a tournament. What, what it's happened crazy to him in the happen. first fight? Um, they they said they didn't know exactly where it happened, but um, he was hitting some some big takedowns with some big slams, and they think that he just kind of landed wrong. And you know, ribs are pretty fragile, so one can go pretty easily. Yes, one can. <laughs> so ex- explain for us, you know, uh, your style. You know, uh, what I, I know that you do uh, some jujitsu, and and uh, I read about you a little bit. You like to take people to the ground, uh, um, but you also have a good stand up game. So. 
give me your your sort of training history. Where where did I mean, what you come out of? I, I consider myself a really well rounded fighter, um, but I I got my start. Um, I I adapted to jujitsu um, primarily, and and I just really love that, and um, have really worked on evolving my game for MMA because BJJ is a completely different sport, and um, well, I'm you know, decent at BJJ. There are a lot of other people that, you know, train that every single day all the time and they have a very different, you know, uh, and approach to that game. Jiu-jitsu? Brazilian jiu Yes. Um, so I've adapted my style for MMA and, um, I recently became a black belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Awesome. Uh, but I, my style is primarily for MMA. Now there's, this is a total sidebar. So let me sidebar you for a second. There's all this hubbub on the, uh, in the surf world about Kelly Slater running a blue belt. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so what in the world is a blue belt if you don't if you would? So there's there's a ranking system in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu as in a lot of traditional martial arts. And uh with Jiu Jitsu, um it starts with well for, for adults, uh sixteen and over, it starts white, then it goes blue, purple, brown, black. Oh, so it's just above white. Just above white. Oh. But gotcha. I mean there's a there's a big gap in between each belt ranking and um it was said that he like basically gave it to himself, which is a huge no, no in the sport and you're going to get called out on. So I think people were just kind of trying to bust his chops about it, but, um, but it is like something that you just don't do. Okay. Fair, well, it could be hype too. I mean, it's Kelly knows. Slater. I mean, who it's knows. Kelly Slater. There's yeah. going to be s- stories here, there and everywhere. I, I have a question, Jessica. My wife uh, is an off-road racer. She's won five championships, That's amazing. but she, you know, you still get the questions like, Oh, do you, you know, are you a real athlete? You know, the stigma of being a woman athlete, which has obviously changed in the last 40 years of sports. But do you, do you run into that sometimes? Or do you feel like the acceptance is like, because obviously now in our, our time, the age that we live in, women are equal. They do all these sports, everything from surf to whatever. But do you still sometimes feel that stigma like, oh, you're a fighter? She's looking at you like you're on thin ice no, right now. It's, just no, 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 not at all. But... <laughs> The, the thing that I run into mostly is, okay, you're, you're a female fighter, but are you attractive? Because if you're not attractive, I'm not watching you. I think that is the thing that all female athletes everywhere have to deal That's with. That's a reality. That is. That's yeah. absolutely. It, are you marketable? Yeah. Like, they don't care if you're good. Yeah. They I, don't. They I, just I, I want to interject <laughs> that, that I think in all fairness, the same is true for male athletes. What? No. no, you don't. All, male, all males are ugly, so it's not an. It's I didn't watch Tyson the fights all the time because he was hot. The only yeah. time that that is true is if I know nothing about the sport. I'll pick the more attractive guy to root for just to like get involved with it. I sure. mean, so it is. It is play into both. But I I agree with what you're saying because, you know, when you, I I stand there right. So you know, I'm sometimes I'm behind the scenes watching mm-hmm. my wife what she's doing, and I and I hear the interactions and, oh yeah, you know, you race or whatever, but. I think it's cool what the women, the empowerment of all the women doing these sports and no matter what it is. I mean, obviously, there have been ladies have been fighting in mixed martial arts for a while and racing or whatever. But it's it's become very popular. And today's kids aren't growing up with stick and ball sports like they used to. Like I know that Dan's son is huge into football and he's on his way possibly to a football pro football career. But the kids nowadays have that. so many different choices. And I think it's cool what you guys are doing. You're doing personally. My wife is doing personally is changing the face of it because now it's in the media, it's in the social media, and all these girls have something to aspire to other than just being someone's boyfriend, which of course was the times when we grew up, us 40-somethings, it was, it was a different time in the world. And so I think it's freaking awesome. And, and awesome. let's face it, the biggest name in the sport is a female. True. So. Absolutely. But I mean, luckily the UFC has, you know, opened its, its doors to women, which they said that they would never do in a million years. How and long has it been? I've, I don't mean to put you on the spot, approximately. No, I've, I've been in the sport for 10 years, and there were women that were competing, you know, long before me, but getting no recognition. Some of them are still around, but they're kind of on their way out, unfortunately. Sure. They didn't, you know, uh, it, it just wasn't in their, in their time of competition, which is really unfortunate. But, I mean, luckily, um, it, it's a great time for women, you know, to be in sports because we are getting a lot more acceptance and recognition and people aren't afraid of putting us on the forefront of, of a promotion. So it's just, it's a great time and it's taken a really long time and it's been a very frustrating yeah. road with lots of ups and downs, but I'm just, I'm glad we're here. I mean, it's, it's amazing. I was going to kind of allude to that, like the journey, the, the ladies that uh, basically paved that 
that journey. And, and a lot of them never got the respect. Right. They never got the uh, um, recognition. A lot of them never got good enough to earn it, but they went and did it anyways. And that was actually part of what paved that path. Absolutely. Because whether they were, you know, you can look at a girl and, and, and got, what guys are going to do is they're going to they're gonna obviously look at how they look. But they're also going to say, can't she really handle herself? If she can kick my butt in a car, then okay, then I'm going to respect that. Or, or you know, if, if, if I feel like she really can perform, then I'm ultimately going to respect that. Uh, um, but there are, there are girls along the way that have kind of stood there and couldn't perform but put themselves in the situation because they wanted the attention or whatever. Do you think that did harm or good? I think it actually probably did good because it at least gave someone behind them some hope that, that would perform. You know, Absolutely. I think of like, uh, um, you know, uh, Sarah Price that races for Toyota of Escondido and, you know, this family here that saw it, it takes – empowering girls very seriously and jumps at the opportunity to do that. Scott Whitehead and I talked about it just yeah. earlier today. And it's just one of those things like you're either of that mm. character, a person that gets it or you're not. Well, I still think that you can be shocked by things that you don't expect. My best friend, Mark Moss, or one mm -hmm. of my best friends, he posts a picture of his two daughters, six and nine, dropping on a skateboard ramp. I mean, you really, for, I looked at it and I was like, it took a second. Right. Oh, yeah. You know, I understand, but still, I mean, like I said, I'm a 40 something. Those things didn't happen as much or often, but now that social media is well, right here all the time. I, I want to hit back on, on Sarah again. So <clears throat> when I became such a big proponent of these, uh, uh, ladies in, in different action sports, it was back when Sarah just had become a pro outdoor motocross racer. And I had the privilege of hosting TV for the, the one year it was there for women's outdoor motocross. Now, the series has kind of gone away, which is a bummer. But now in these times, may, maybe it's the time where things like that can start coming back. And there was, you know, as the top five girls to 10 girls could absolutely rip. You got Vicki Golden out there that's, you know, in X Games win it, win it medals. She earned her way into a Supercross event. Maybe she'll do even better this next year. But uh, I really hope they can get some more uh, eyes on that sport as well, too. I also think whenever I start going down this path, for me, I think of a, um, a girl named Lisa Anderson. And Lisa Anderson was a professional surfer that uh, basically the Roxy movement and Roxy is a clothing brand owned by Quicksilver that uh, um, exploded into a, a multi hundred million dollar super brand. And when that happened, it was on the uh, it was on the deck of Lisa Anderson's surfboard that made that made that for happen. sure. Absolutely. And and what I what I think was so important about that is finally the industries that, that these action sports are sort of supported by were able to say, I can monetize it. And I do believe that that was very important for girls getting opportunities. They've, they've yet to figure it out in a couple of other genres. I don't know how they're doing in MMA. I think there's certainly one girl that's doing really well. But, you know, Moto, it's hard. It, it seems like they're still When struggling. we come back from break, we're going to actually let Jessica talk. Uh, so that's what I was thinking, maybe. You know, and uh, we got a lot more to dig into one of – find out where, where she started out, how it all came together, what's up next for her, all kinds of good stuff. So, folks, the Action Sports Show, powered by Toyota Escondido Action Sports. We're going to go pay some bills, and we'll be right back. Hold on. Time means savings time. And right now at Toyota of Escondido, you can save more than ever before on over 100 bold and exciting new 2015 Camrys. Drive home a great deal today with huge, sizzling summer savings you can count on. Toyota of Escondido. Toyota of Escondido. During this giant, sizzling summer sale, you'll find the year's hottest deals on over 1,000 best-selling Toyotas. Toyota of Escondido has over 12 and a half acres of Toyotas to choose from. Come in today and save. Toyota of, Toyota of Escondido. Freeway closed.
close where Highway 78 meets Broadway, just east of the 15. What's up? This is Robbie Madison. You're listening to the Action Sports Show, where all things action sports goes on. Tell your mom how to say hello and keep it wide open. You're on, guys. All right, so welcome back to the Action Sports Show, powered by Toyota Escondido Action Sports. Jim Holtis, Dan McGranahan, and Cameron Steele here live in house, and we are talking to UFC contender Jessica Penne uh, here live on set. And uh, Jessica, where where did it all start for you? Were you just casually, uh, you know, doing different forms of martial arts when the sport kind of started evolving and, and spiked your interest? How did it all start? No, um, I. I played sports my whole life. I was in uh, soccer, softball, volleyball um, through up to junior high. And then in high school, I was on the softball team and the swim team. And I really wanted to to wrestle. It just, you know, caught my eye. It, it really appealed to me. I wanted to do it. And they just didn't want females on the wrestling team. And then I kind of understood it. I ended up being a stack girl and I would, you know, kind of do some workouts with them and you know, watching them compete, I, I kind of understood why they really didn't want females to compete. And I'm not the kind of person that will, you know, just push my way into something, uh, especially where I'm not wanted. Um, so after high school, I um, I went into a gym after, um, you know, thinking about the sport quite a bit and just um, not really knowing where I wanted to go with it, but I was just so interested in it that I, I had to do it. So I went into a gym and um, I started grappling and doing kickboxing and boxing and, you know, at first, it was just kind of for a workout just to get, you know, um, uh, used to it. And I, through there, found some people who fought and who taught. And so it just was kind of a natural progression from there. I just, you know, fell in love with it. And uh, it, it became my life. Yes, it did. <laughs> the direction it's taking you is pretty incredible. I mean, the things you've got to experience, the things you've got to see have, have been pretty cool. This sport has been the most positive thing that has ever happened to me. You know, it's, it's been such a positive influence in my life. I've met amazing people. I've traveled to amazing places. Um, I mean, it has not been an easy road at all. It has been really difficult. Um, I have not been financially stable until like the last year or two. Um, so it's just, it's been really rough, but I'd rather do something that I love, you know, every single day and kind of suffer through it than, you know, be unhappy and, um, you know, making money and doing something that I hate. So I just, I feel very lucky and fortunate to do what I do. And, and fortunately it's, um, in my lifetime, you know, they've, they've opened up the doors in the UFC for women and, and I'm part of it. So which is, I'm which is lucky. great. And, and you're kind of, uh, you know, now you're, now you're in the big show. You were part of the first ever female Bellator fights. Is that correct? Um, I was one of the first females, uh, to fight in Bellator. And then I was also um, the first ever Invicta FC and weight champion. Awesome. Um, and when the UFC opened up a weight class for women, initially it was 135, and um, the second one was 115. And I was part of their inaugural um, Ultimate Fighter uh, reality TV cast for the 115ers. So I, I started at 105 pounds, and I moved up to 115. And, um, and what's the name of your weight class in the UFC? Straw weight. Straw weight. Straw weight. Uh, Before it was weight. Adam weight. <laughs> <laughs> the Adam. Um, so, uh, good. so you were part of the reality TV show. Who, who was the coaches? Um, it was Anthony Pettis and Gilbert Melendez. Nice. And I was part of Team Pettis. Very cool. And that was, I mean, I'm, I've never wanted to be on reality TV, like, ever at all. It's not really, you know, for my personality because I'm, I'm really reserved. Yeah. But it was, you know, it was a once in a lifetime experience and you just kind of had to. Did you get the squabbles with other girls in the house? No, that's, that's not really me. I pretty much like kept to myself. I mean, there's plenty of drama though. There's, like, there's mean, always those couple. girls yeah. in, in like a house with like three bedrooms and a bar and it's hot. It was like middle of the summer and everybody was just like hot and cranky. And, and they're like, have at the bar. All you want. We got the cameras rolling. The oh, producer, yeah. The producers oh, yeah. It was are shutting unlimited. down the air conditioning, <laughs> trying to make it as right? comfortable as possible. And it's like you didn't need to go there. Like there was going to be drama anyways. Like you did not need to like mess with anything. It was just, yeah, it was a pressure cooker. It was pretty intense. So what was the, what was, give me, give me some behind the scenes. Like, like, uh, what, some dirt nobody knows about what happened there. It's, been, it's past. It's I so I mean, they far showed past. everything, though. They really did. I mean, every single bit of drama that happened, they focused on. I mean, the fun stuff is what you missed. 
like us having like slumber parties and singing and, you know, having actually like really cool bonding experiences. They didn't show any of that, which was pretty disappointing. I mean, I get, you know, drama sells, you know, reality TV and that's what it's all about. But it was just such a unique experience and like the first time them ever having all females on a series like that. So it would have been really cool to kind of see more of our personalities like in a positive manner. <laughs> Were you surprised how the, are you surprised how the edit came out or, or was it pretty much what you expected? I, I expected one thing. it to be like that. However, I was still disappointed mm. that, you know, they, they cut out some really cool moments. I mean, how, how often do you get to like really like bond and get to know people that are in your sport doing the same thing, chasing the same dream? Like it, there were some really cool moments and there were some really amazing things that happened on that show and they chose to show all the drama. That brings me to a, a question. I think that how much uh, camaraderie is there amongst the fighters, whether it be men or women? I mean, you're competing against each other. You're competing for sponsorships or titles or whatever it is. I mean, when you're not fighting, are we friends or are we – is it kind of like some of some? It's this weird competitive thing. I mean, I am I'm supportive to, to some of the girls. I made some really cool connections on that show, and I had cool connections – uh, with some of the girls that fight in the UFC before I went on the show because I was in a lower weight class. So I was like, oh, I can be friends with straw weights. That's fine. I'm never going to fight them. I'm an Adam The weight. straws and the Adams, <laughs> they can get along. We can, yeah, we can be cool. But I mean, business is business. I can turn it on and turn it off. It, it doesn't bother me. But some people do get competitive and it turns into cattiness. And I mean, that's the same with the men as it is with the women. Sure. Um, Right now, certain females, like in other sports, get more attention than others, which is frustrating and it causes a little bit more competition than camaraderie, unfortunately. Yeah. The weigh-ins. You know, you see a lot of drama at the weigh-ins. <clears throat> How much of that is, le like, real legit? How much of that is, hey, well, we could take this to another level right now? <laughs> I, I think exactly. Rhonda and Misha's real. <laughs> Oh, for sure. That's real. <laughs> that is so fun to watch too. <laughs> it's, um, I mean, some people get, get really pumped up when it comes, you know, to, to weigh in time. Cause it's really the first time that you're facing off with your opponent and you want to let them know that you're there and that you're, you know, serious. And it's, it's a mind game, you know, sure. you're just, you're testing the waters and you're testing your opponent, like before you get in the cage. So it's, um, I, I think some of it is real and some of it's just a little bit, you know, built up pent up energy and they just need to let it out somehow. <laughs> they can't wait till the fight. <laughs> yeah. So Rhonda being at a higher weight ca class, you guys will never meet. That's just too far apart, right? No, that's too far apart. But the crazy thing is, okay, so 135 is not that popular of a weight class. Most females are fighting, um, are, are closer to the 115 pound, uh, weight class. But since there's only two weight classes in the UFC, most people, like no matter what their weight class is, are going to 115. And that's what makes it such a crazy weight class. So you have 105ers, 115ers, and 125ers all fighting at 115. So it it really makes, you know, some matchups really difficult. And it makes things really interesting for the viewers. But um, as fighters, it, it can cause like a lot of, of um, I don't know, different different strategies needed and, and different things. You kind of, um, I've had to learn how to, how to fight bigger people that I've, I've never had to fight before. So you have to fight everybody differently. So what do you think is, is the advantage? Is it cutting weight to, to hit 115? Is it gaining weight or, or we're coming in underweight? For, um, for the show that I was on, I was definitely at an advantage because I had to make weight three times within seven weeks. So I feel that because I was in a lower weight class and I really didn't have to cut weight, that it was not. So you were already walking near the weight you had to make. Yes. But now I'm having to put on weight. So it's taking me a lot longer than some of the girls because I'm basically having to go up like two weight classes because I have to compete with 125ers now. So I have to put on enough weight to compete with 115ers and 125ers. So it's, um, I feel like the bigger, stronger people are at a, a a big advantage. However, now the UFC and USADA are coming together and they're making um, a ban on IVs, which is what you do, you know, after weigh-ins, you, you know, rehydrate through. Yeah. yeah. And so they're taking that away and they're also um, getting into like um, drug testing, really extensive yeah. drug screenings and, and that's cleaning up the sport and it's kind of even the playing field, I, I hope. <laughs> how, many, well, how many? I have some techniques oh, for putting on weight and so if, if they work really well for me. So uh, I'd be happy to share on my bacon cheeseburger. You want to you want to call up a couple different girls? Maybe they could all pool their money, and I'll share some <laughs> ideas for uh, 
how to put some weight on. Sorry, go ahead, Cam. Is that ever a problem in your guys in, you know, the motorsports and, and all that kind of stuff, sure. like the extreme sorts? Is like competition enhancing drugs a thing? I is think that... it's a part of all all sports. I mean, some of it isn't regulated. There's a lot of hubbub in off road racing, which I do, endurance off road racing. Uh, a lot of hubbub about uh, performance enhancing things. Uh, you know, you hear rumors about IVs in the trucks, you hear rumors about, you know, different attention drugs or whatever that people are doing. And, um, I, I don't do any of it. And, uh, actually I kind of almost fell asleep in the race truck last year at the bottom of a thousand. We did get third and I didn't fall asleep, but it, we and, were and you, singing and, and you gave, in the race truck. <laughs> you gave Just, up uh, your Arby's supplement. So I don't know if that has yeah. anything to do with it. Well, yeah, we're not doing that. Um, but I think it's, I think it's prevalent in every sport, um, at some level, you know, everything has its, uh, you know, it's relative in different terms, but, uh, I think that anytime there's an advantage and there's money on the line or a championship, I think that there's people that are going to be willing to take that risk. And well, especially and, with no oversight. Yeah, there's no. Yeah, for my sport, there's no oversight. Oh wow! In off-road racing, they, I mean, no one's paying. No one pays attention. So it's to like, me. why we're in the race truck for 22 hours you, last year. The winner of the bottom thousand was 22 hours. These guys will spend a million dollars to get their truck right. You think they won't spend a thousand bucks to have an IV set up in the mm-hmm. truck? You know. Yeah, it seems like kinda. that's all the r- rumors. I can't substantiate it because I'm in the other race truck, but you hear it, you know. So I, I you I'm know, just saying though, shooting an IV would be kind of hard in a, you know. No, you just have a pick line already <laughs> in. You don't I, have to I shoot it. it. I get it. I get it. I'm just saying. Just being funny. Anyway, how many licensed female fighters by the UFC? Out of curiosity, I mean. I mean, I'm. I think there are less than fifty. Less I mean, than it's, fifty. It's still a pretty, you know, small division, and I mean, there just aren't enough shows to to have more females in the weight classes. So, I mean, the more shows that the UFC puts on, the more females that we can have. I, I didn't and we're seeing more. Like, like some, some cards, we'll, we'll see two sets of which females on, which amazing. is awesome. I mean, we were lucky if we could get, you know, one female fight on, on the, card. the preliminaries. Right. <laughs> so it's amazing that they're, they're headlighting And we're hoping cards. that you're going to be on the Dominic Cruz, TJ Dillashaw card. Yes, I want to be on that card so Everybody bad. call <laughs> Dana White. And tell them that you want Jessica on that card. She so who do you want to fight? That was gonna anybody. Ask. Honestly, anybody. I'm game. Throw a name out there. Who do you want to fight? Like who, who, who's, a good, who's a good competition? Dana, I, this is the perfect <laughs> fight for anybody me. Anybody in the top ten. Paige? Show. What? Paige, is she uh, in she your? She already has a fight. She already has a fight. But she's in your weight class and up and coming young, young girl. What's your <laughs> thoughts on her? And is that something that might meet someday? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I'm honestly, I'm game to fight anyone. Um, the availability of, of female fighters in my weight class right now is just like the kind of problem. So I just have to see who, who doesn't have a fight yet. Are the, are the, the ladies now, obviously when you came into it, we're talking a decade ago and when it first became sanctioned by UFC, you're talking 12, 15 women. Now you're at 50. But the question I have is how do the gyms look now? How, how's that next group look i mean are there going to be the next generation hundreds of women not next generation i mean because we're talking i mean i think the ages are too close but girls that are ladies that are seven years younger than you is there going to be a hundred women vying for positions or do you think it's going to stay relatively the same for a while i think it'll stay a little bit small for now i mean we've been around a long time competing for a really long time without getting any recognition so i think that you know maybe maybe in a year to two years we'll see maybe another weight class added but um I mean, the I've noticed a huge um, amount of female like BJJ competitors Mm -hmm. when I would go to tournament when I first started training, there was like maybe one other girl in my weight class, if any, or they would just, you know, put us all together in an absolute match and be like, there you go. You're fighting a 200 pound girl. (laughs) What you do do see in these scenarios like this in in, uh, um, all credit where it's due uh, when when a female like a like a Ronda Rousey shoots into superstardom it does it, it's typically followed by a flood of young females wanting to follow that path so i wouldn't be surprised which is if, great if if we see a, a major surge of uh female fighters in the mma i think there will be i mean there there are finally amateur organizations which was not around when i was you know first starting so there's amateur organizations there's more female competitors in tournaments so everybody's getting a a lot more experience it's huge it's absolutely huge so there are a lot of 
amateur females coming up um, who have, you know, 10 amateur fights and uh, before they even make their pro debut. So, I mean, I do think that it's it's building, but I think it's still going to take a little while. And female wrestling at the high school level is now a thing. So they girls actually that. have their own yeah. female wrestling teams yeah. and they compete against other schools with female wrestling That's teams. Amazing. Where it's going how amazing is that? that? I mean, times have really changed. I mean, just the amazing. last 20 years or less. It's incredible. I went to one where they had a girl wrestling with a guy. And, and, uh, and I mean, that still happens. It used to happen, but, um, I mean, to, at a, at a certain age, it's fine. But then when you hit, you know, when the guys start getting their, you know, a little bass in their voice and <laughs> start getting, you know, their, their muscles and stuff like that, it kind of becomes, we've discussed it on this, this show. I still want to know when I'm going to get my muscles. <laughs> <laughs> I, I want to know that too. Uh, um, they'll drop one the of these gym. days. Go they'll the drop. Gym. I went this morning. I'm going tomorrow. We got to go to break here in a moment. But what we want to know is we've talked about it many times. Let's get into the discussion. The girl versus the guy fight. You know, the, you know what guy would you fight? What would it take? How, how – I mean, obviously, you could beat all of us up. But what but, about all the hype about, you know, Cyborg and – and well, let's hit all on all that. Stuff. But when we come back, keep in mind, we got Charles Dow calling in our fitness report. But maybe uh, Jessica would like to hang out and yeah, be one of the hosts. Uh, if you give me more pizza and cookies, I'll stay as More pizza and cookies it is. <laughs> well, we're gonna, we are at the halfway point. When we come back, fitness tip by fitness guru Charles Dow. The action sports show powered by Toyota Escondido Action Sports. We will be right back. Hey, have you ever had that little nervous sort of bad feeling in your gut, like there's a big party going on and you weren't invited? Well, here's the deal. If you have an FHA mortgage and you haven't taken advantage of the government's latest FHA programs, well, not only are you missing the party, but your girlfriend may be there without you. Seriously, though, here's the deal. By the way, this thing's so simple, it's a joke. In fact, I'm shocked it's mortgage-related. If you have an FHA mortgage, Lennox Financial can streamline refinance it for you and hopefully save you thousands of dollars. And we hardly need anything. So call us at 888-945-4105. We don't have to verify your income, and we won't. We don't care if you have a nickel because there's no asset verification on this deal. And the real bonus is no appraisal is required. Yes, that's right. No appraisal. But you got to move on it now. Don't blow it. As the economy recovers, rates will rise. It's the biggest no-brainer in the history of mankind. Call Lennox Financial at 888-945-4105. That's 888-945-4105. Licensed by the Department of Corporations, CRMLA. Not all loans apply. Equal housing lender. Balding, thinning, think you don't have any options, you do. La Jolla Hair, MD, 844-567-HAIR. That's 844-567-HAIR. Here to tell you just a little bit about the procedure, our program director, Mike Shepard. This was so easy. This was done in one day. Tell everybody a little bit, Mike, just how easy the process was and how you got it all done there in one afternoon. It was terrific. I came in. They pampered me. It was like a day spa for guys. I mean, you're talking about the big screen on the wall. You got Netflix. You got music. I had a catered lunch. I took a nap. Not bad for a day. And at the end of that day, what I was left with was my own natural hair starting to grow in places I never had hair before. So not only is it simple, not only can you do this in an afternoon, go in there, see Dr. Shafu's team at La Jolla Hair MD, it also works. It does work. Find out for yourself. Call for your free consultation at 844-567-HAIR. That's LaJoyaHairMD.com. $1,000 off your procedure if you mention the Mighty 1090. 844 844- 567 here. This season, Jack in the Box is partnering with the San Diego Padres to support Big Brothers, Big Sisters of San Diego County. Each time the Padres jack one out of the park this season at home, Jack in the Box will donate $500 to Big Brothers, Big Sisters Operation Bigs program. Operation Bigs is a one to one mentorship program that pairs military children with volunteer bigs to spend time together each week. Thanks to Jack in the Box and the San Diego Padres for supporting Big Brothers, Big Sisters of San Diego County. I'm Brian Scudamore from 1-800-GOT-JUNK, and this... You're the guys that babysit planet Earth. You point at junk. And we make it disappear. I heard you guys are from outer space. Point at that junk, sir. Wow. Would it matter if we were? Not a bit. This is awesome. We're happy that you're happy. You guys are out of this world. That's only a rumor. When junk needs to disappear... Call 1-800-GOT-JUNK. Or visit 1-800-GOT-JUNK.com. This rainy season, listen to the prevention warnings and safety tips. Take care and ensure you and your family's lives because they will always be the most important thing. 
Be prepared with a first aid kit, radio, flashlights with extra batteries, purified water, canned food, and personal documents in plastic bags. In the case of an emergency, call 088 Konogwa Semernet. Thank you, because it wasn't easy. Thank you, because this election was special. Thank you, because the country learned together. Thank you for believing. Thank you for hanging in there. Thank you for being a critic. Thank you for the good ideas. Thank you, because together you can change the country's course. Thank you. Pawn. Strengthening thanks to you. National Action Party. Hi, this is Sarah Price, and you're listening to the Action Sports Show, powered by Toyota of Escondido. You're on, guys. All right, folks, welcome back to the Action Sports Show. Jim Holtis, Dan McGranahan, and Cameron Steele here piloting the ship tonight. We want to uh, let you know that while you're on the website, go follow us on all of our social media at TE Action Sports. That's at TE Action Sports and stay on top of anything and everything. Uh, you never know what we've got uh, going on. We want to give another big uh, uh, shout out to uh, our local Geico insurance office who's out here. They're at a 7-Eleven Center Drive in San Marcos. Brought all kinds of food down here tonight and uh, uh, celebrating, doing free quotes for everyone. And uh, we talked about the, uh, the, the great pricing that they have. So you definitely want to go uh, check them out. Your North County Geico insurance office, 7-Eleven Center Drive in San Marcos. So you and are, I do want to point out, Geico is one of the few brands that truly puts their money where their mouth is when it comes to supporting action sports. A lot of the others will do ads, you know, and they'll do some TV commercials or whatever and kind of quasi, yeah, we support bikers, we support dirt bikers. But these guys, their hands are dirty. Their hands are greasy. They're in it to win it. They're real supporters of this sport at the truck racing level, at the moto racing level. And I really respect that about them. Absolutely. Absolutely. Check them out. Well, hey, it is time for the very first action sports show fitness tip of the week by presented by Icon Sports Performance and Wellness Center and its guru himself, Mr. Charles Dow. Charles, are you with us? Hey, gentlemen, how are we doing this evening? Lady and gentlemen, we are we are doing Ladies great. Ladies and gentlemen, my apologies. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. Don't choke me out. It's the All Skate <laughs> featuring Charles Dow. And Don Maeda. <laughs> <laughs> we got to go round two with that, fellas. Uh, we're going to have to definitely do that. Uh, but, Charles, uh, welcome back to the show. What, what sort of uh, uh, edgy tips do you got us in the fitness world here this week on the Action Sports Show? You know, one of the things I want to talk about is because it's preseason Supercross. You got a couple guys getting ready for Monster Cup, whatnot, here in uh, October. But uh, as far as periodization is involved, we were about three months uh, before A1. Um, one of the things we really want to try and enhance and talk in terms of a lot of the guys' training programs is injury prevention. And with that, we implement things like a functional movement test, and uh, we go ahead and figure out what the muscular balances are implement corrective exercises, making sure the joints, ligaments, everything's strong and sturdy. That way, when they get in the meat of their training program, their body's able to sustain that. So um, injury prevention is a huge component for a lot of the pro athletes. Uh, even though you see them kind of on the weekends or whatnot racing and, and putting in work, there's a lot more that goes behind the scenes than, than meets the eye. Boom, boom. Especially right in a there. sport like that where, uh, you know, folks get injured and they're out for weeks and their their championship hunts are pretty much done. Well, I, I like what he's talking about. And he's talking about a thing that a, a guy there in his – one of his guys there, Eddie Casillas, does uh, for you, I believe, was part of that. And that's yeah. really yep. doing that mm-hmm. injury assessment, that, bod, that, that body assessment to see where your weak spots are. And I really believe in what he's talking about. You would be surprised – you're walking around, you're feeling good, you're feeling strong, you're racing good, you think everything's going great, and then they take you into this functional movement test and, and this uh, um, body balance test that they do, and like, oh, wow, your glutes are weak, you're compensating, here's how you're doing this, this, and this, and you didn't even know it, and they totally transform you into twice the athlete you ever thought you could have been. Well, I'm going to have to go. You need to go. 
Charles, I, I, got a, I got a question for you. Uh, Dan just yes, mentioned uh, uh, the glutes. Tiger Woods once pulled out due to his glutes not activating. I've had other professional golfers say that's absolutely a truism and a fact. Is that truth or not? How active, well, how active are your glutes? <laughs> I'm clinching them as we speak. So I've yeah. never heard that in any sport, let alone golf. But that's true, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's your powerhouse. I mean, uh, you know, even when it comes to MMA, whatnot, and you're striking, even though a lot of hands, uh, everybody sees strikings with the hands or punches, you know, the power actually comes from the glutes in your core. So without having the piriformis and your glutes, you know, major and minor all activated, you know, something's bound to go ahead and get pulled. So, so absolutely. one more question since my, my friend Jim here brought it up, Charles. Uh, is golf a sport? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely, 110%. I mean, any sport out there that requires uh, any type of athletic ability or whatnot, I mean, you try and go ahead and, and, and hit a, uh, a drive, you know, 30 yards down the middle in the green, you know. 30? Precision. How about 300? 300, I'm sorry, 300. I was like, no, those are numbers I can work with. <laughs> yeah, but Dan's like, I think I got a shot. <laughs> it's 300 yards. 300 yards, you know, those, those guys are, are precise in the wind conditions and, and the landscape is different every time, so pass off to them. And I'll tell you what, guys like Tiger Woods definitely have pioneered the athlete uh, in the sport of golf because uh, these guys are just crushing it these days. He, yeah. Jack Nicholas, guys like that, John Daly, not exactly the chiseled athlete that you would think of. Well, uh, give us some advice real quick, if you would, since we got you, uh, for our boy Cameron Steele here. He has, uh, he races trucks. He's getting What's to be on. What's going on, Cameron? How you holding up, my man? Good. How you been? He's getting good, to be, good. be on the other side of his 30s. And, uh, um, and so how would you take an athlete like him and prepare him for peak fitness? You know, as a race car driver, a uh, truck driver, you know, a lot of it has to do with cardio, muscular endurance, and, and uh, being able to work on those fast switch muscle fibers in regards to uh, reacting uh, to the different lines and whatnot. You know, a, a lot of core stability, a lot of flexibility, a lot of breathing, um, any type of sustained cardio. I mean, uh, Deegan loves to do boxing with us. He loves to do jujitsu because it's constant isometric contraction. So um, anything in, in, in that realm would be awesome. He just throws words in there like isometric contractions. <laughs> I can't even Hold on say a that word. <laughs> what? <laughs> it's a curse word. <laughs> All right. Well, we're going to isometric contrast here. Hey, uh, Charles, th <laughs> thanks so much uh, uh, for uh, calling in our, our first uh, tip of the week. Look forward to talking with you again soon. Tell the folks the website where they can go find out more about uh, your fitness center. Yeah, you can check us out at IconSportsAlliance.com. Uh, follow us on Facebook at IconSportsAlliance. Uh, Instagram is at IconSports1. And if you guys are up this way this weekend in Marietta, there's the uh, Marietta Lobster Fest. So come out and join the family for good eats as well. Lobster and push-ups. Sounds good. <laughs> Lobster and push-ups. You got it. Thanks, buddy. All right. Thank you, everybody. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Likewise, sir. That was great hearing from Charles. You know, we're, we're going to be doing some stuff like that. And, uh, um, you know, uh, te you can text us some questions if you got some questions. Uh, um, we are, you know, uh, uh, we want to interact with people and we want to have a kind of show that really engages with people. And uh, um, we're actually this is our first day being able to activate call-ins. And so we're excited to be doing that. And that was uh, our first call-in. We will have another one coming up here. Uh, pretty and, sure and Jason maybe. Anderson, but while we're waiting uh, for that, let's get back to uh, uh, Jessica. We were just hitting on some some things uh, when we went to, to break, and we were kind of talking about it a little bit afterwards. So, Ronda Rousey, Cyborg. Will this ever happen? Who wins if it does? It has to happen. I it, need to right? see that it fight happen. It has to happen. That fight needs to happen just so I can watch it. <laughs> I mean, does Rhonda have to say that she beat Cyborg, that she beat everybody? Because that's what everyone I says. I think so. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, that, that's her legacy. She can't leave that fight that, that's, know, behind. I'm, I have the exact same opinion. No other fight matters to Rhonda except right. for that fight. Absolutely. And I any fight between fight. now and that fight is just about collecting some cheddar. Yes. And what's the scuttlebutt? <laughs> I mean... Are we going to see it? Is it going to happen? She's about, uh, Cyborg's about, about what, 10, 15 pounds heavier? She, she fights at the 145 pound. In another class. organization. In another organization. However, like she's been in talks with the UFC 
you know, it's been all a buzz about this fight happening, but it's like the the biggest thing is can she make 135 pounds which they're saying the offer is to fight at that weight class because you're coming here to fight the existing champion that's what you have to do correct yes um so right now she's fighting in um another organization invicta fc which is my previous organization it's um all females and so right now she's the 145 pound champ over there and she's been fighting there but she's been working with um a nutritionist to you know, try and make that weight class. So I think they'll probably have her do a, a you know, a trial run at 135 in pounds inside Invicta is what, you know, I think should possibly happen. Um, but she's, she's got to make that weight and she's a, a bigger girl. I so, think they split the difference. Let her drop five, let her come up five and get they've this already fight tried down. that. They've already tried that. And why would the champ not, in, in, in this organization want to go up five though? You got to come beat the well, champ. She used to fight at one because right. She is not the champ until she beats her. Her legacy is not complete until she beats her. But she is. So you champ. can stand on your high horse, but the world will. Dude, not. it's not my ho high horse. It's not my rules. <laughs> no, I didn't mean you. I meant in theory. <laughs> but you did come out again. I mean, you're you're poo pooing it. So dance. well, no, that's what that's what Dana White's saying. And I mean, it makes sense. the The UFC belt, which is the biggest belt on the biggest platform, agreed, is one thirty five. Fact. So that's where that fight needs to happen. I, I hear you. At some point, if they cannot get it done, just make the five pound works. It, from, from a, from a and, and I may be totally wrong, but from a fan standpoint, it's like five pounds. Like, come on, dude. So if they meet five, it, five, five pounds, pounds a lot. is a lot. But here's I the mean, thing. I mean, I used to fight at 105. You're telling me five pounds. Like, you want me to drop five more pounds? Like, I'm like, no. <laughs> no way. So, I could go in the room like over I, there and <laughs> drop between five and seven. <laughs> right. Absolutely. <laughs> No, five pounds is, Whoa, is a lot. Yeah. It's it's absolutely a lot. But with only two down. weight classes in the whole UFC, I mean, you're already co-mingling different weight classes in both divisions, really. Right? Um, yes, but, but mostly in 115. I mean, yeah. 135, you have some people that have dropped down from 145, but there's just not that much competition. So in what if class. there's a super heavyweight, 150-pound girl, that, and you can't fight in the UFC? I mean. Invicta. Yeah. True. Yeah, Invicta so, actually is just having a 155. Just because you'll ha hate me for it, who who wins? <laughs> Within striking distance. You know what? I I don't know. That's why I want to see this fight so much. Um, Ronda has, has really come a long way since when she first started, and she was just primarily a, a judoka. So she's really um, evolved her game, and, and she's a lot more well-rounded, and she's become a lot more dangerous. So, I mean, if it was... Initially, like early on in the career, I would say Cyborg wins. Uh, however, now I think it's going to be a really competitive. Years are ticking away now, and, and, and Justine's getting a, a little older as well. She's not that old. She's not that much older than, than Rhonda? No. Um, I don't think so. I could let wrong. me ask you this. Uh, well, first of all, I, I saw the replay of Tate Rousey 2 on TV the other day. And she took her into the third round, and Rhonda got hit with some shots and was kind of like, whoa. Uh, I'm not used to getting hit, and uh, Justine's going to hit like nobody's ever hit her. Can can she take that? I, I gosh, I, I got to no, see Chris this. Chris Cyborg is an absolute beast. I um, you know, I used to train in the same gym as her, and just really? watching her is. is We're going to have to get her uh, in in on the show here too. We got uh, an invite out to to, to try to get her in house. Really cool so girl. did you ever spar with her? Do you ever roll with her? Um, I I have sparred with her. Um, but she was very gentle with me. <laughs> I was terrified the whole time. I was absolutely terrified because I see her. I see her spar with men, and she spars with dudes. She spars with dudes. Straight up. Yes, like and she she breaks females. <laughs> it's um the the female training partners that that she's had just really don't give her the work that she needs. So she trains primarily. Doesn't Rhonda spar with dudes? Yeah. Yeah. What's your take on? Misha not getting the third title shot now after it was promised to her. And what's your take on Holly Holm? Is she a worthy opponent? You know, I just, I think that, you know, it's unfortunate that she was promised that spot or, yeah. you know, it was, it was, you know, said that the winner of that fight could be a title contention fight. So it's unfortunate, but it is a business. And it is. we've already seen that fight twice. So and, I, and I she understand. understands that business decision. I understand. But she's like, uh, you know, Dana telling me that 
losing a third time would wouldn't would be maybe a career ender or whatever. But I, I don't know if that's I think the case. A career but. ender. Um, but I think you're right. We've seen it. Sorry. And, right? That's what they're saying. We, yeah. yeah, we've already seen it twice. And you, she, are they going to fight? You think Dan and Jim? Like, no, 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 no. Are you going to drop a bomb on I don't know what he's waving. Are you taking swipes I thought me? I saw a hammer fist, right? No, I thought he was coming down I, on like, you. Oh, is he going to strike me? I hey, we're not, I hey, we're not in the same weight class. I elementary school, and I rose my hand because I wanted to ask a question. <laughs> we are not in the same weight class. He has a rose. <laughs> I've arisen. Okay, so here's the question. Uh, um... You're very articulate, well, very thank beautiful. You. Well, thank you. You have a uh, this incredible storied career. Uh, is there TV in your future? Uh, would you consider something like that? I mean, you're, say you're going to fight for another three to five years, maybe. I'm just assuming. Uh, what comes next, and, and where's how's that transition? Do you have a plan? Um, you know, I do have I do have aspirations. I would love you know to do what Dom does. Honestly, I would love to be in analysis, and um, I've had the opportunity to you know be on fox before and that was that was great i'm a communications major so that's kind of what i went to school for and and i absolutely love it so i would love an opportunity towards that so i'm trying to work hard to you know to get open there that and have, door okay have a job when i'm i'm done with this job being a communications major i mean you could probably give us some tips because i <laughs> i see you grading us with your eyes right <laughs> I'm judging she's judging, judging us all, all of the time. totally <laughs> These fools never went to school right here. These fools Clearly. right here are winging it. This place smells like San Clemente High School. <laughs> oh, that's terrible. <laughs> now, we had yeah, an interesting uh, a talk during the break about some of the reps and, and stuff like that. I wanted to touch on that, Dan, that you were you were. Well, posting. I just basically said I have a reaction when I watch girls fight. Uh, um, and you break out? Uh, um, I, I want to go in and stop it. I, I feel uncomfortable about it. Uh, um, it's not that bad. I don't like, okay, I'll watch it. I'm not going to like literally go try to stop it. But, but I, but you know, on the inside, there is, a, there is a real reaction also where I'm like, oh, I'm supposed to be protecting girls. I can't be letting them fight. And I mean, I think that's the reaction that a lot of people have. I mean, to males and females bleeding in, in sport, but I mean, this is, it, it's a combat sport and this is what we signed up for. And, um, it is a little bit frustrating sometimes because I feel like even some of, of the referees in this sport who are, you know, no stranger to seeing a fighter, you know, cut and, and in bad shape that, um, they're a little bit quicker to, to call the fight when a female's cut, um, than when a man is cut. So yeah. it's, um, it's a little bit frustrating, but, um, I, you know, I'm going to try to hold my is. emotions now that you've clued me into that. <laughs> and, uh, um, but I can imagine that's rough for refs. We are going to go to break. We got our next guest coming right up, right after this. The Action Sports Show, powered by Toyota Escondido Action Sports.